So the Xperia 1 Mark IV from Sony, the pricing is bad, the timing is worse. And there are a couple of reasons that I say this. And I was reading a news article saying that the interest and the pre-orders in the Xperia 1 Mark IV is particularly low. A third of what the Xperia 1 Mark III was just last year. So I think there are a couple of reasons for this. One, the price is just too high. Too high. Yes, I get it. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. I know there's supply chain shortages. I know that Sony doesn't make as large a scale when it comes to phones as other manufacturers. All that stuff enables you to make things cheaper because the more you make, the lower the price is per unit. Well, Sony doesn't really do business that way. And the thing is, they're kind of refining stuff and making it better and better and better. And I got to say that on paper, on paper, the Xperia 1 Mark IV looks like it's probably a fantastic and amazing phone. I'm going to pay entirely too much money and get one. It's very frustrating because I'm sure the price will probably drop. But anyway, we can talk about that later. But it's a particularly insensitive time right now to buy this phone. And also other things could be factoring in as well, like inflation, the price of materials. I mean, shoot, at least the price of gas here in Houston a year and a half ago was like a buck sixty-nine, and now it's four twenty a gallon. So that stuff trickles down. A year ago, a gallon of milk was like a buck eighty, and now it's like three and a half dollars here. So adding all that stuff together, looking at the phone, it's understandable. Maybe the price did go up a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, whatever. They're doing some cool things with it. But you have a very niche market for this product, and that niche market has less money than usual. Everybody has less money than usual. We're kind of in a global slump right now when it comes to money, recession stuff, all that. Kind of not a good time to buy a $1,599 phone. Again, this is a very, 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 like, there's like an iota, like a little speck in the tech spectrum where this phone falls into place. Now, that doesn't mean tech enthusiasts like myself don't want it. But actually needing it is another story because it's designed for content creators. Most content creators use a camera or they use a much cheaper, more efficient thing like what I'm using here, my iPhone 13 Pro. It serves me really well. Uh, it would be hard pressed for me to switch over from my iPhone to use this Sony, and then I'm going out and spending $1,600 plus tax to get a new phone. That's just not an economical thing to do. It's great. There are limited use case scenarios where it's a really, really ideal product, and then of course most of that requires you to buy more expensive accessories to go with it. So the timing is just bad, especially with the price, and that just makes things worse because normally people might be more inclined to buy it, but also it's not during a holiday season. Whenever the Xperia 1 Mark III came out, it didn't come to the States till late last year. And I think maybe around then it was a better buying time, but who knows? Comparing apples to apples, I think things financially were actually a little bit more better back then. We had a lot of stimulus stuff going around, at least in the U.S., putting more money in people's pockets. Right now, that's not the case. So the price is bad. But I know that they're, they've got high profit margins on this. They could probably have lowered those a little bit to accentuate the price point and make it a little bit more attractive. $15.99 is going to be a really hard sell. Again, tech enthusiasts probably are going to be less inclined to buy it, and people who might actually want it and need it likely have other stuff they're using right now that they can continue to use and save the money and keep using whatever phone they're using. So I just don't see there being a strong enough attraction and demand to overcome that price point. The second thing, the timing. The timing is just bad. Well, there's a little bit of fatigue when it comes to Sony phones. What did we just get not two months ago? The Sony Xperia Pro I with a one-inch sensor in it. That, that was a really cool thing. And a couple months before that, we got the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III. So if we had the 1 Mark III come out the end of last year, availability early this year, right after that was available here in the States, we got the Pro I, and now we're turning, we're turning the tables and, and cycling over to this Xperia 1 Mark IV which isn't going to be here till September. Now, of course, internationally, I believe it's launching on June the 18th, but that also gives us a staggered phase in, which means less excitement, less fanfare. They had the event. I think it might have been online only. I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I watched the recap. It wasn't awe-inspiring. It's cool. It's neat. I like the idea that we're going to get a better selfie camera. I made a video about that already. That's huge. I'm really excited about it because... I love the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III. I think this right here, pound for pound, absent the selfie camera and the quirky camera apps that you really need to know how to do manual photography to get the best photo, the phone experience, I love. Like if I could, if I could take some of the pixel stuff and combine it 
with the Xperia 1 Mark III, it would be my ideal phone. I absolutely love the Xperia 1 Mark III. I love the Pixel 6 Pro. See, I got it right here. Apparently, I'm picking my phones up upside down today. These two phones right here, amazing. And you can pick up the Xperia 1 Mark III for about 800 bucks now, and you can pick up the Pixel 6 Pro for 899 Both of these phones, I would say unequivocally for most people, would be a much more beneficial, stellar, financially incentivized pickup than the One Mark IV. Now, the One Mark IV is going to have some attractive things for it. There's going to be some shiny bells and whistles that catch people's eye. They get people like me who want to go spend our dollars for it, and that's fine. I'm going to make videos about it. I'm really excited about it. But the timing is just bad. The price is bad. The timing is bad. It's a perfect storm of suck for this phone. So I have complaints about it, of course. I made a video about how they're not including the power brick or the power cable or maybe even the documentation. There's a lot of people going back and forth on this, but I did I did some due diligence on this. I actually read a lot of stuff. Uh, I saw a video about it from actually Super Saf was the first one I saw it. And then I saw a tweet from MKBHD. And then he said he followed up directly with Sony. And Sony says, yes, that's the retail packaging. This is what everybody's getting. So a box with nothing but a phone in it. Which, fine, but lower the price. And that's the other thing. We're, they're taking everything out of the box, and then they're charging us more money. So it comes off as tone deaf. It comes off as insensitive. It comes off as a ripoff in a lot of different aspects when you look at it from value pricing and also what you pay for and what you get. So the phone itself is probably amazing. If they sold it for $1,000, it would sell like hotcakes. It would be game-changing. But Sony can't do that, and Sony has a lot of money. I don't know why they can't pull a Google throw a little extra money out there, take some of this on the chin, especially whenever there's been all this market share that was freed up with LG over the last year. Everybody else capitalized on it. TCL capitalized on it. Google capitalized on it. Motorola capitalized on it. Sony tried to maybe by making three models that all cost fourteen dollars to $2,000. So I don't think that's quite the price segment that was vacated. The price segment that was vacated and made opportunities for people to slide in and sell phones was the $200 to like $800 price category. So Sony didn't really increase their market share, I don't think, too much by that one. But yes, price is bad. Timing is bad. The whole enchilada is just not that great when it comes to a proposition. So it makes sense that reading off this this leaker, this guy who is very prominent when it comes to leaks, I can't remember his name. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. But yes, he's reporting that it's one third of the pre-orders of the Xperia 1 Mark III. And the Xperia 1 Mark V actually has a pretty good incentive. It comes with the XM4 earbuds. And those are pretty pricey too. I, I listened to them myself. They're not my most favorite in the world. I don't like to spend that much kind of money for that stuff anyway. Um, but actually, I do have the Sony Xperia XM5 headphones right now. Contemplating doing a review on it. On the fence, I'm not really much of an audio guy. I used to make a lot of audio product reviews a long time ago. Not so much as of late. Usually just kind of the sound core stuff when they reach out to me every year with the new ones that come out. But I, didn't even th I think that's kind of even not really a thing anymore. I haven't talked to them in a while. But yeah, these XM5 sound fantastic, but they're $400. So that kind of limits the upside on people going and buying those too. It's cool if I want to go buy it from my channel and review it and whatever, but I don't see a lot of people standing outside the Best Buy door uh, when it opens to buy $400 headphones, especially not in this market, especially when people's grocery carts have gone from $100 to $200 or $200 to $400. Your gas bill has gone from $300 to $700. Now is not the time for an obscure phone that's a very niche market with that's not even going to be available for months, and it's going to cost you that much money. Especially when you consider the timing, the Fold 4 is probably going to be about the same price. I, I have, I kind of think the Fold 4 is going to be about $15.99. And if they can do that, who wants to go buy a Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV when you can get a Fold 4 for probably the same price? And then also you could get the S22 Ultra at a discount with great trade-in programs, which you don't get with Sony. And then the iPhone 14 Pro is going to be here. And then the Pixel 7, there is a flurry of phones it's going to have to compete with. They should have launched it now. If they launched it immediately and they took about two or $300 off the price instead of trying to throw the buds with it, but then, hey, still throw the buds in there with it, that's cool. But I think there's a three-pronged thing here. Uh, the timing is bad because of the price, the market, and just people are kind of worn out. A lot of the people that would buy this phone have already bought the Xperia 1 Mark III and have bought the Xperia 1 Pro I. And then it's like, oh, guys, here's another one. So all those things combined lead me to say... Bad price, worse timing 
or whatever I said in the title. I'll have to go look at it later. So that's my thoughts on it. What do you think? Do you think that there's something to what I've said here? Do you think that the market conditions, the price, and all that stuff are just bad for it right now? Have you bought a Sony phone in the recent past? I mean, I did. I paid $800 for this one a couple of months ago, and great deal. Wait six months. Wait four months. If you want to get the Xperia 1 Mark IV, I highly encourage you not to buy it on launch day. And Sony probably will see this, and they'll probably never send me a phone, but whatever. I'll just keep buying whatever I want anyway. It's a very bad, very bad financial decision. Like I'm going to do it because I'm going to make review videos, and that will make me some money, which will offset the price of it. So it's not the craziest thing in the world from a business perspective. But for somebody who just wants the phone, unless you just have a bunch of cash laying around and you just want to go buy it, fine, YOLO, go do whatever you do. I do not judge anyone based off of their phone purchasing decisions, mostly. <laughs> but yeah, if you've got money to burn, go buy it. But if you're a, but if you're worried about trying to get a better deal, you think it's overpriced, don't get bent over a barrel by Sony. Let them lower the price because they will. They will. And then you can get a good deal. And if you can get it for 800 to to 1000 bucks, like I did with my Xperia 1 Mark III, You'll be in a good spot, and then you'll be really happy because you got an amazing phone at a really good price. It's competitive. So that's all I got. If you have any questions or comments, please go down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. I thank you for your support day in and day out. You guys are awesome. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. I'll see you in the next video.